today we are talking about Ollie McBurney. Now, you might ask, why McBurney? Well, I think we're a really integral part of his career at Sheffield United. And to be honest, it's possible we will be at the beginning of the end of his career at Sheffield United. So everybody will remember we signed him that first season back in the Premier League. We paid £20 million for him, as the song goes, from Swansea. And... It's been a mixed bag since he joined United. He's had some fantastic performances. He's been a standout at times in terms of his physicality, in terms of the impact that he can have on United as a team. I think this season in particular, we have seen that, you know. We've seen that when he plays, United are a better side, that we are competitive at this level, and that actually his ability to hold up the ball, to bring others into play, really has helped United develop their structure, develop their style, and helps us actually get a foothold in games where without him, we've been completely lost. However, there is also the other side to Ollie McBurney, which has been consistent since he joined Sheffield United. And this has been through a range of different issues, not all of which we will go into in detail, but that it's worth just paying reference to at the start. We've had off-field issues that we've experienced during his time at Sheffield United. We've had on-field issues where he has struggled for form, particularly in terms of scoring goals. He went on a very, very long goal drought. I think it lasted around 14 months between goals. There was injuries there. He was out for a long time, but it took him a long time and Sheffield United fans were starting to lose their patience with him. But when he did get that goal last season against Luton, we saw him go on a great run and actually finish last season with a more than creditable 12 goals during United's promotion. This season, it's been injuries and it's been suspensions. And they are both really, really costly because, like I said at the start, he does make us better. He helps us to compete. But... He does not play anywhere near enough games of football for it to really say that we've got our money's worth out of a £20 million signing, and it's just never quite worked. So why is now the integral part of his time at Sheffield United? Well, it's because his contract has only got six months remaining. It runs out next summer, and while we know that conversations are ongoing about sort of contract negotiations with a range of players that United have got whose contracts are running out, I, for one, have not heard that McBurney is anywhere close in terms of signing a contract renewal, in terms of announcing that he will be staying with Sheffield United long term. And therefore, the question rears its head. Do we sell Ollie McBurney in January? Do we try and get him to re-sign a new contract? Or do we say, let's keep him for this season and we let him go for nothing in the summer? Now, for me... I have to admit, we'll go through each of these options, but I will put my preference up right up front. I believe that we should probably look to sell Ollie McBurney in January. Like I've said, I know the impact he's had on United. I know that he has contributed to our better performances and that actually with him in the team, we look like a team capable of competing. Against Manchester United, he really helped us get out carry a threat. He brought Archer, he brought Harmer into play. And by being able to keep the ball in the other team's half, we actually relieve some of that pressure on our defence. We make less defensive mistakes because he's there to take some of the pressure. He also contributes in our own box. We had Pompey on this very channel doing the fans react to our defeat to Luton. And he made the point that actually on many an occasion, Ollie McBurney has been Sheffield United's best defender, particularly in terms of having that role of just coming out and attacking corners. And he does that as well as anyone. He is physically competitive and he does mean that we carry our own aerial threat that we don't have without him in the squad. But for all of that positivity, he has been sent off twice. He has been injured at least twice, maybe more. He has missed more games this season than he has been available to play. And we can't carry a player like that in the current Sheffield United squad. I don't think we can also afford the financial hit of letting a player go for a free transfer when there may be an opportunity to earn a little bit of money back on the sort of transfer fee that we paid. So I think this window will be interesting. There have been rumours that somebody like Rangers would be interested in taking Oli McBurney. I think those rumours might be agent talk. They might come from Oli McBurney's side. We all know he's from Scotland. He's a Rangers fan. I'm sure he would absolutely love the opportunity to go and play for them, particularly as they try and chase down Celtic to win the Scottish Premiership for only the second time in about 15 years. So I'm sure he would cherish and love that opportunity. And I think it works for United. I think if we can get some money in the door, I do think he would command a multi-million 
million pound transfer fee. It won't be anything like what we paid for him, but you would expect it to be two to five million pounds, which at this moment in time, given Sheffield United's precarious financial position, I don't think we can afford to burn that cash on the table. I also think if we can get that money in, it might actually allow us to do some business of our own in January. Now, following the defeat to Luton, it's quite likely that Sheffield United will now be relegated from the Premier League. But that doesn't mean we have to stop trying to develop our squad for the next six months. We can't afford to wait until the summer. So let's start that refresh now. Let's get what funds we can in the door for players like McBurney, who is out of contract, and let's replace him with somebody else who's going to be able to contribute this season, but also for multiple seasons seasons into the future so that when we go down into the championship we have a striker who is going to be as impactful as McBurney hopefully with a better goals record than McBurney but also most crucially is less injury prone less likely to get sent off and more likely to play 40 35 games over a season rather than 20 25 games in a season now, of course, there are other options, and I'm sure the club will be looking at all of them. He was, at one point, our all-time record transfer signing. £20 million is not an amount of money that Sheffield United throw around willy-nilly. I know we've done it multiple times in recent years. Brewster, Archer, Berger. I know that not many of them have been raging successes. So you could argue that of the players we've spent that amount of money on, McBurney has had the best impact, has been the best of those. And so we might want to keep him around. We might want to say, look, we can't let this £20 million player go for £5 million. We need to get our value, our money's worth out of him. And so I'm sure they will be negotiating. They will be looking what they can do to try and get him to sign a new contract. But I asked the question in terms of what value is brought out of this. And I don't think that we would want to give him a massive pay rise. I don't think he's done anywhere near enough on the pitch to deserve that. Would he himself want to take a pay cut? I'm sure he signed quite favourable deal when he joined United, probably with a relegation clause and then probably with a promotion clause. So I imagine he'll be on similar wages to what he was on originally. And it's a question to me of if he's looking to sign a new contract, we can't afford to improve that contract. And so it might be that we are in a bit of a stalemate in terms of our negotiations of trying to get him to stay. So what does that mean for Sheffield United for the rest of this season? I've spoken about the impact he has when he is able to play. We've got to replace that. We've got to use any investment wisely. We can't afford to just let the money go to waste and be forgotten because we've got to be proactive in this transfer market and we've got to try and find those solutions. There were rumours of certain players in the summer, somebody like Kiefer Moore. Now, for me, he's not the long-term replacement that I would want us to invest this kind of money in. He's not the player that I would be saying, right, we've got money from McBurney, let's go and spend it on him. However, short-term loan, that might be an option. We've talked about Illiman and Dai coming in. Now, we're not going to play and Dai, McBurney and Archer. If he's coming in, then we also need to find a way to finance his wages, to finance his reintroduction to the squad. And again, does that come at the cost of Ole McBurney? It's an interesting conversation and it's a difficult one to have when he's actually been playing pretty well when he's been on the pitch. I thought he had a really good impact against Luton Town. He's got his goal. I think he's probably of the players that play for Sheffield United, so not counting on goals. I think Colin McBurney is United's top scorer so far this season. He's done OK in the Premier League. He's made the team better. We do struggle a bit without him. But we've also seen that we can put in performances without him. We saw it against Villa. It was backs to the wall. It was defensive, but also it was impactful. And it showed that we don't necessarily need him to constantly be our out ball. And maybe it showed us what the future without Ollie McBurney would look like for the next six months. And maybe beyond that, if we don't manage to get the right replacement through the door. Thank you so much for watching this. I do believe this will be my last appearance on the channel before the new year. And therefore, Happy New Year to absolutely everybody who's watched this. Let's hope it's a fantastic 2024 for Sheffield United. And let's hope we don't have to wait too long before we get the answer to the question, what do we do with Ollie McBurney? Where does he go? Does he stay? Does he leave? Do we sell? Let's just keep talking about it. Let's talk about Ollie McBurney, and I'd like to hear you talk about Ollie McBurney in our comments. Let me know what you'd do, whether you think we need him, whether you think we should be better off reinvesting any transfer fee that we can find. Up the blades. Thanks, everyone.